Hi guys and welcome back to another quick Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and welcome to this quick video post. In today's video post I want to introduce you guys again to the fourth part of our mini series of hair retouching techniques. Now in today's part four I want to quickly just show you guys the last step of just retouching these hairs a little bit and giving or getting a little bit more pop and cleaning up everything and getting it just nice. In part one we showed you guys how to just clean up all of these little hairs here that are flying in our image. Then in part two we showed you guys how to retouch these two holes there at the top and in part three we showed you guys how to just clean everything up here in the front and now in part four I'm going to pretty much show you guys how to bring the pop into there. Okay yeah image was sponsored again by Cass Photography local beauty photographer please have a minute and have a look at her work. Then also we retouching on Samantha Lauren Kane who is a local model and makeup artist in Cape Town. Alright so let's get started in this tutorial and here we go. So first off we still have our two help layers here which we used in the first tutorials as you guys can remember. Basically what I want to do quickly with these two layers here if you want to, you can delete them I'm just going to put them in a group with command J and just write the help layers so I know always okay that's my help layers if I still need them I can turn them on again if I don't need them I can just turn them off okay back to our hair retouch layer and now we are in our last step that we actually did with hair retouching and we finished up everything let me just make this a little bit bigger here okay then on our last step that we were here hair retouching on the blurring side we blurred that still a little bit and just faded in all these little hairs and now we're going to work on words in that technique and just onto this hair part here actually okay so next step that I'm going to do is just go over here in our adjustment layers adjustment panel and we're going to add a another adjustment curve on here we're just going to tweak now the bright parts a little bit so basically I want to just lighten these highlights a little bit so let me tweak this a little bit don't worry about the skin I'm not looking on any parts on the skin I don't care about the skin at the moment the only thing that's interesting me at the moment is the hair and all the highlights on the hair so don't worry if you just destroy the skin there a little bit. Okay, tweak that a little bit more. As you guys can also see, we're getting a lot of purple in the hair there and a little bit of more magenta. So don't worry about that. We're going to fix that in a later stage as well. Okay, keep it over there. Don't worry if it's not perfect yet. We can always later go back and tweak that again. Then I'm going to go out here of my adjustment curves and do another adjustment curves over here. Go back into there. But before I do that, I first have to turn off this layer because now otherwise it will be totally distracting. Okay, go into here and now we're going to darken these areas a little bit. So take our curve down here and we're just going to darken these parts a little bit. Just get more contrast into there, not too much, just a little bit. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, that's nice. If you want, you can also try to get it right to tweak a, or to do one adjustment layers with highlights and dark parts. I like to keep them apart. Okay, next step, I'm going to invert these masks now or these, these layers actually. So I'm going to press Command E and now we've inverted all of that. Then again the second stage I'm also going to do that to go over here and our second layer also going to press command E and invert that as well. Alright now I've inverted everything what now? Now I'll go over to my brush and with a say 80% I'm just going to press 80 on my keyboard 80% opacity white foreground color I'm going to paint on my mask ha be sure to select your mask over here and now feather that control alt feather my brush here a little bit again a little bit more that's okay okay and I'm also working with a vacuum continuous four board so I'm able again to change my brush size via my wheel here so on my mask I'm just gonna brush a little bit these highlights in so just carefully draw over these highlight areas here just very carefully over here a little bit maybe down here okay we didn't work too much down here so let me just do it over here on the top Gonna make my brush a little bit bigger again. Okay, and over there. That's good for me. If you do a mistake, just go with X, change your foreground colors, and then we're gonna paint out that a little bit here on the side. Okay. Then also gonna go back now to my second layer, which is my darken. So maybe we can put this actually to highlight. highlight area and then we're gonna say just darken or something okay keep it to darken and highlight back to darken select your mask again then with a white foreground color because this is black so we need to paint in our blacks there a little bit then also AD opacity uh, AD opacity there so we're just gonna paint that in a little bit as well then here at the top as well a little bit okay 
now we got that all together and maybe that is still a bit harsh with our highlights here can't really see it that much let me zoom out a little bit to see yep that is a little bit too heavy so what I'm gonna do now is go back into my highlight area double click here onto my layer and we will be directly taken back into our adjustment panel then down here just gonna take it a little bit down not too much I don't want to have it that much highlighted okay nicely just like that okay then we're gonna select both layers again and we're going to say command J to group that once again. Now we're just going to group that say in a curves group. Curves, we're going to keep it over there. Nice and easy. Okay, now we can see what we did with our curves already and that already pushed it just a little bit just to give that here a little bit of punch. But we also have a little bit of more color in there, more magentas, more red. So just watch out for that. We still need to fix that in a little bit. Okay, the next step that I'm going to do is basically I'm going to dodge and burn a little bit on here. But before I dodge and burn, I do have a technique for that. I use actually my action script and run a quick dodge and burn. But if you don't have that, then you will have to um, create your dodge and burn layers from scratch. So what I'll do, I'm not going to even work with these two tools over here, our dodge and burn effects. On the right hand side if I'm honest they dodge and burn I never use these two tools I showed you guys how what they are and what they do but I don't really work with them what I do is I go here onto my new layer I can select that press command a select all of my image then press M go into marking tool press right click and go to fill say here fill my whole new layer with a use 50% gray color say okay that command D and then I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command J, duplicate that, and then I'm going to rename this to Soft Light, and I'm going to rename the second to Hard Light. There we go, Hard Light, and then I'm going to select both of them and say Command J, and put that in a group and call that Dodge and Burn. If you want, I'm going to write it out today. Okay, and now what I do is take these two Dodge and Burn and the Hard Light, I'm going to set that to Overlay, and the Soft Light to soft light. Okay, there we go. Now we've created our new um, quick dodge and burn effects and yeah, let's get started. On our hard layer now in dodge and burn, we're going to take our brush again. We're going to switch our foreground colors here back to black and white. So with black foreground color, that's where I'm going to start now. And I'm going to put my opacity to just 0.7. So 7% normal um, blending modes here at normal and my brush has to be feathered quite a lot so I'm going to feather my brush even more turn my uh, brush size down a little bit say to what 150 pixels there okay navigator zoom in a little bit and basically what I'm doing now is just placing the light a little bit better so I'm gonna just darken these areas here a little bit more over here when doing this, be very carefully when painting with this. This can easily damage your image. Okay, a little bit over here. And then we're going to just darken these areas a little bit over here. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is press X to switch my foreground colors back to highlights or back to white. So now I'm going to just dodge actually a little bit on these highlights here. Over there. And also on the skin, but I'm not going to do that on my hard layer. I'm going to switch back to my soft layer. And then with also zero opacity, normal blending mode, white foreground color, I'm just going to brush in here with a little bit of white uh, down here. So we're just taking out these dark parts a little bit again. Okay, and then one big over here with the highlights. And we're going to zoom out a little bit again. And that still looks a bit fake. It doesn't look that perfect, but it looks already a little bit better. Okay, going to minimize that again. Turn it off and on. See the next step that we actually did. We control the light even more just with our next dodge and burn effect. The next step that I want to do is take dodge and burn and curves, put that together in a group, say Command J again, double click on here, and we're just going to rename that to here, color. Okay, over there. Then we want to go back into that group, open this group again, go back to Dodge and Burn. Then we're going to go back to Command, Alt, Shift, E, Master Shortcut, press that. Back to our normal layer. Okay, we're going to rename that to, say, whatever you want to, second or, or color again. So just write color there. I'm mostly a guy that renames this layer directly, not afterwards, because then I still know what's going on. Okay, take that. And what I'm going to do now is basically just going to do an adjustment layer on top of that 
and where it is here selective color we're going to take the selective color or no actually we're going to take the hue and saturation and then we're just going to take it to reds and take that reds down a little bit so as you guys can see it fades everything fades out now so I don't want to take it too much down because I want to get a little bit of that magentas and reds out of the hair a little bit so let me take it to minus 15 turn this on and off have a look that was our hair. Okay, that looks a bit better. Okay, then also going to invert that mask again. And on that mask, press B for brush, white foreground color, 100 opacity. And then I'm just going to draw very carefully. Okay, watch out. Press Control Alt again. Watch out for your feathering over there. And now we're just going to brush out a little bit of these reds in the hair over here. If you want them, you're welcome to keep them. I like to keep it, wash them out now a little bit because then it just looks a little bit realer with the hair going into that black and white. Okay, but too much maybe, then I'm just going to take down my opacity, say by 70% to 70%. That looks better already. Okay, got that into there. We've got everything in our hair color. If you want to, you can create again a new group here and just call that our look or the color. Okay, color, and there we go. Turn that down to another layer, and there we have it. Our new fixed uh, piece of hair that we actually did now. Just the last touch-ups on that hair, just to get that a little bit better. Okay, so let me just show it to you guys once more what we actually did in our little mini-series of our four parts of hair retouching. We started out doing, first of all, just touching up all the hairs that are flying, and we just cleaned everything up a little bit here. Then we fix these two holes in the front, as you guys can see over there. Fix that. Then we did the last stage where we just fixed the pony here in the front a little bit and made everything nice and straight. And our last touch-up was just giving that hair a little bit pop and just bringing everything in a little bit more. Okay, if I zoom out a little bit more, you guys can also see the effect is quite heavy. Let me just do everything like once. Okay, there I still have another technique for you guys. Take all these groups and now you're going to do a master group and you're going to click Command J and put that all together in one group and call it hair. Okay, there we go. Now we got everything under our hair and now everything is say done with the hair. It's not perfect yet. I can still see there's loads of things to do in this hair but to show you guys just quickly in a full little series how to retouch hair. That was it. Okay, next step would most probably be then retouching skin and there you would do the same kind of effects. You would also go step by step by step, retouch your way into there. Okay, I hope you guys learned something from this quick mini series of hair retouching. My name is Manny. Thank you guys for watching. If you still have any questions, please email me to team at mannyphotography.co.za. I'm really glad to help you guys with your questions. If you like this video, please share these video series a little bit, put them onto your blogs, whatever you want to do with it. My my name is Manny, thank you guys for watching and see you all next week in another quick tutorial. Bye bye guys.